Hey, third grade, today you are going to get a white sheet of paper. You're also gonna get this worksheet. It should say day one on it. Okay, that's the one you wanna start with. You might get to the one that says day two today, um, but we'll see. I'll let your teacher um, decide that, whether you are ready to move on to the next step or not. But you're gonna get a worksheet, you're gonna get that white sheet of paper, and you're gonna need either a black crayon or a black colored pencil today. So you need to get that out of your art supplies. Do not use a black washable marker because we're going to be using watercolor on these at the end. If you use a black washable marker, all your lines and things that you're going to draw are going to end up getting washed away. So black wash, or excuse me, so black colored pencil or black crayon. So you put your name on the back, Mr. Calvert, and I can flip it over. And this worksheet is going to help you draw out your design. So take it step by step. It breaks it down into what to do. Um, try to read what it says first before you ask your teacher what to do. Okay, you need to be third graders. Make sure you're reading the instructions. This one says, step one, with a black permanent marker, we're going to use crayons or colored pencils, draw two large shapes of your choice. Now, this person decided to draw a square and a triangle. Okay, so geometric shapes would probably work pretty well. So that's things that we can name like squares, triangles, rectangles, um, circles, ovals. Those are all shapes that we can name. You don't have to use those shapes, but I would recommend using them because uh, those straight lines I think are going to help you out on your design. Um, so maybe I'll do something like this. I'm going to do a triangle, and I'm going to do be like a diamond shape. Okay, so I got my two shapes. Step two, it says draw four lines that start on one edge of the paper and on, end on a different side. So you can see kind of their examples. They did one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, it says to use curved lines, use straight lines, use bent lines. So there's a curved one, there's a straight one, there's a bent one. Okay, it's up to you how you want to do that. Okay, I might go curved. I'll do a bent one over here. Do straight. And maybe I'll do another curved. Okay, step three. Make each of your shapes and lines have a double line by outlining your original line. So here you can see they did a triangle, then they did another triangle. They did that curved line, then they did another curved line. Notice sometimes they overlap, okay? So then you have to make one shape kind of disappear underneath the other. So I'm gonna do that with each one of my shapes. So that means I'm doing another triangle. Do another one of these curves. Do another diamond shape. All right, so I doubled everything. Step five or step four, divide up large areas with a few bisecting lines. So bisecting line, um, it's kind of these lines that you see in the background. They're just straight lines that they're using to divide up the space. Um, so you can kind of draw those how you'd like. So maybe I'll go like a line through here. All right, so I got a few bisecting lines. Don't want to do too many, all right, because you're going to have to fill all those shapes in, so don't do too many. Step five, make sure to flip your paper over. Okay, it's double-sided. Step five, write your first, middle, and last name in your art. Okay, so my first name is Robert. Maybe I'll do Robert down here. I'm going to do mine in all capitals. Writing it nice and neatly. Remember, I'm using a black colored pencil. I decided not to use a regular pencil today, so if I make a mistake, I'm stuck with it. So 
Robert. Then I've got, we'll do Devin right here. Devin is my middle name. I actually go by my middle name, not my first name. And then I've got Calvert, which is my last name. And maybe I'll do Calvert. I'll do Calvert right here. There we go. So step five was to write my first, middle, and last name. Step six. Make your words in five shapes or lines extra bold. So if you make something bold, it means you go over it a couple times so it gets darker. So when I look at this one versus this one, notice how the words are really dark. Some of these lines are really dark. Okay, so it said start with my name. So that means I'm going to kind of trace over that a couple times. So it gets darker, kind of adds a little bit of emphasis to some of the words and shapes. It also adds variety, so it's not all exactly the same. Right now that I have my name bolded, so it looks extra dark, then it's said to do five shapes or lines the same way. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of repeat some of those lines and shapes that I did, making them extra bold. Kind of think about where you're going to put these. Don't just do all of your bold stuff in one area. Kind of spread it out. So there's one. I'll do this one. This is going to be number two. I got to do five of them. This one's going to be three. And five. So I did my name bold, then I did one, two, three, four, five bold lines. The last thing that you're going to do today is it says add extra shapes and lines inside the large spaces to break them up more. So use curved lines, use straight lines, use triangles and squares. They're all great space dividers. So you can see how this person did you know, some of these squares, they did some of these half circle shapes. Here's some more of those half circles kind of repeated some of those lines that they did. So we really want to go in and add some more details to it. Kind of like what I'm doing now. All right, once you get this far, you are done for today. Um, so you can kind of see those extra details that I added. I went in and added some of these curve lines, some of these curve lines. Um, kind of like a weird, almost almost like a checkerboard type look right here. Some lines in here. Okay, so really just breaking up that space because the next time we're gonna have to come in and add a whole bunch of itty bitty patterns and then we'll finish these up by painting them. Okay, so remember to follow your worksheet. It tells you exactly what, you do, what to do each step. Okay, make sure to um, read it first, then ask your teacher if you still don't understand. Um, when you're finished, make sure that your teacher gets your artwork because we're going to work on this next time. Okay, and then if you have leftover time, you can work in your sketchbook and your uh, classroom teacher will let you know what pages to work on your sketchbook. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.